As a child growing up playing in nature, I was always really fascinated by insects, how they looked, how they interacted, and what they did. During the fall of my sophomore year, I took the course of Field Natural History taught by Professor Winger, where the class was assigned to make a semester-long book collection. During this assignment, I developed a strong appreciation for their overwhelming diversity, ecological importance, and their place in nature. The following semester, in a much different setting, I volunteered at a week-long event preparing cricket burgers, which had incorporated both crickets and mealworms inside. Seeing several hundred people's responses to the bug burgers made me question my own stigma against insects and wonder at how that stigma developed. These two experiences contrasted so greatly from appreciating and seeing in a new light each individual insect that I encountered to mass seduction of insects in a commercialized setting. In this video, I will explore human connections to insects as a coexistence and as a food source. To examine current stigmas regarding the human's relation with insects, I interviewed five Dickinson students. Probably creepy. I'm not a fan of insects, so I'd probably say uh, gross. The first attitude that I think of when I think of insects is crunchy. Uh, I don't really like bugs, honestly, <laughs> just in general. I mean, they're good for the environment. Depends from insect to insect. Some I just really hate, others I don't care about. Small, crunchy. Compared to like my friends and like some other people I know, I'm definitely more tolerant of insects. I'll avoid them if I can, but I'm probably not gonna freak out if they come like on me or anything. I think it's a love-hate relationship. Um, I think that when they're in food, I deeply appreciate them. But um, when they appear unexpectedly, I suddenly don't appreciate them so much. I don't love being in close proximity to insects. I think they're totally fine outside. I'd say overall not very good. Uh, I've swatted quite a few flies and mosquitoes, so once again, kind of consider them to be annoyances. I don't like uh, worms and caterpillars very much, but I like everything else. As a kid, I think I was more fascinated by insects at first. Maybe the culture of like jump scares with like insects or in Maybe it's also a little bit like um, stigmatized, so people, you know, would associate insects and bugs to something that is like more negative. Um, but yeah, I think I also realized that bugs and insects have like a function in the ecosystem, um, so they're important, even though some people don't like them there. Used to be a lot more scared of them as a kid. I think I'm a bit less scared of them now. When I was younger. Um, they were a source of entertainment. Uh, when I got a little bit older uh, in, you know, um, street snacks in West Africa, uh, they're very common and oftentimes really good, especially when they're combined with spicy, um, or just spices in general. Um, so they became a play thing at first and then they developed into um, uh, liking to eat them. <laughs> and then on the college farm, coming to fear them because they would appear unexpectedly and they would absolutely destroy crops that we worked hard to uh, produce. Still I'm annoyed by insects. I used to be uh, really scared of some of them, particularly bees, so. Yeah, when I was a kid, I did like caterpillars and worms. I would pick them up a lot. I don't know what happened, but I kind of stopped liking them. It started creeping me out. And I, I think now that I get older, the more I learn about insects, the less I dislike them and the more I appreciate them. I think I'm recently hearing more about it. Um, I think it's kind of interesting and um, I am willing to try insects, so that's exciting, but I'm not sure how I feel about like it being my main source of protein at this point. I think that it's interesting and important. I think that uh, the US having them more easy, like able to be consumed, I think that, that I'm interested to see what the regulations are in terms of, you know, what insects wear and, uh, you know, how they're protecting people from uh, the possibility of contaminants. Um, 
yeah, I'd be interested to see that. And I would be interested to see how they're partnering uh, overseas, I guess, in terms of uh, promoting more regulations. Well, actually, I mean, if it's good for the environment, that's good. Uh, if it's cheap, that's also good. Um, I have not actually, I don't think I've ever eaten an insect food product other than like one of those lollipops with a scorpion in it, which was terrible. So yeah, I'm hoping there's m more innovation out there than that. <laughs> I think it's great, yeah. I think, uh, I wish more people would be willing to eat them and you know, I'm looking forward to it or I'm hoping that it'll become a lot more mainstream because I do think it's uh, a lot more sustainable than the proteins that we use now. Brownies, which makes sense. You got to try a cricket brownie. I think there's definitely something where you're like, you can taste that it's different, but I don't think I would have guessed bugs. So it's kind of more like grainy than normal, but that's kind of similar to the pesto, the insect pesto that I had. Um, but yeah, it tastes good. I can feel that there's um, like discrepancy in the texture. Tastes like a brownie. I think it tastes pretty standard as far as brownies go. It doesn't taste like much, to be honest. I would be willing to eat them more often. Maybe another time. Entomophagy, or the act of eating insects, is widely popular around the world, with up to 80% of the world's population consuming insects. So what is the Western edible insect movement? Why is it happening now? In 2013, the Food and Agricultural Organization of United Nations published a 160-page manual on edible insects and their future prospects for food and feed security, spearheading the edible insect movement in Europe and the United States. In this, they described why the current livestock systems in place are not sustainable. Insects for their efficient feed conversion, high food inputs from waste, a less greenhouse gas production, need for less water, and reduced risks of disease would be a better um, use for the environment. Additionally, insects would be a significant source of protein, zinc, iron, and other nutrients. Wanting to learn more, I visited the Freaky Patru Peculiarium Museum in Portland, Oregon, where mealworm ice cream has been sold at the Griff Shop for eight years. Here, I was able to talk to co-founder Hank Thompson. Um, well, I think at first it was sort of a shock factor thing, and a lot of the stuff is sort of like a dare or a gag, um, but now it's become more mainstream and it's actually a good source of protein, and they've sort of gone beyond just shock things to actually tasting good. So it started out as kind of a gag, but now it's a legitimate snack. So it's kind of come full circle. We, in the summer, we put them on our Sundays, which was, became like a dare, I'm gonna have a bug Sunday, but now it's a legitimate food thing. And obviously the planet can use the help in not eating meat and stuff, so I think we're all about trying to eat bugs. Especially when it's, you know, it's like I'm, I don't want to eat any live bugs, but if it tastes good, I'm in. As Hank said, edible insects are becoming more mainstream. With restaurants starting to serve insects and cookbooks being written about edible insects.